a global pandemic and an economic recession. These twin crises have cast a shadow on the world and have caused the disruption of many things, including the fight against climate change. But according to the International Renewable Energy Agency, or IRENA, stimulus and recovery packages should accelerate the shift to sustainable, decarbonized economies and resilient, inclusive societies. In our assessment, we need to feed the, the market with uh, two trillions of uh, investment per year in the next three years. And we may also have uh, a, a, an added, uh, in addition to our GDP, that's uh, about 1.1% 1. 1 in, the, in the next uh, three years. In their Global Renewables Outlook report, IRENA highlights five technology pillars for the future of energy. Among them is the widespread adoption of hydrogen as an energy source. This can be green hydrogen, which is produced by renewable electricity through electrolysis, or blue hydrogen, which is produced from fossil fuels combined with carbon capture and storage. It can be produced from uh, natural gas, it can be produced from renewables. So they have blue and green hydrogen. But at the end of the day, any kind of hydrogen is going to be very clean for the world. The problem is there's a whole infrastructure that will be needed to be able to do it. Investments have taken a hit due to the COVID-19 pandemic and resulting recession. And this has also affected the renewable energy space. Also, we're having a, a huge cut in investment, probably about 30 to 40 percent in traditional uh, energy, fossil fuel energy investment. And while I know some people who care about clean energy may welcome that type of development, it's not really helpful for the world economy as we're trying to recover from COVID and, and the recession, because what it means is when we come back from the pandemic, the demand will return very swiftly, but much swifter than supply will come back. And so we'll have a supply deficit, which could lead to higher prices. And that's the last thing that the world economy needs. Industry players warn that governments cannot afford to wait until the pandemic is over to continue the transition to a low carbon economy. There's another crisis happening, which is the climate crisis, even though it's probably happening at a lower pace. And so I think there's a real urgency um, there as well. Sunoco says partnerships are key to getting the energy transition back on track. One type of partnership is a large company like Sunoco partnering with a startup. Uh, because a startup brings a lot of innovation but doesn't have the scale to uh, make it bigger, let's say. The second one would be between uh, corporate and between universities, research um, institutes uh, who have tremendous uh, research capabilities. And I think the third um, lever that you can use and, uh, is for the government to uh, fund and help fund uh, this type of uh, partnership. Experts say such collaborations bode well for the energy transformation movement in Asia. In Europe, uh, North America, uh, it's not expected to have uh, a significant uh, electricity or uh, energy growth in the future. And roughly 100% of uh, future electricity and energy demand is going to come from emerging markets. And that's uh, very notably from Asia. Making the transition to this low-carbon future might cause disruptions. But such disruptions also create new business opportunities. This is, could be perceived as a threat by some energy companies, but it's also an opportunity. Because this gives uh, companies, uh, energy companies the opportunity to, on the one side, transform their core, expand their core into new uh, spaces, and then pivot towards uh, new spaces like uh, renewables. Because uh, if the price of electricity is zero and uh, you don't make money margin out of electricity, you need to create margin out of other products and services. Mm -hmm. And uh, then you need to create uh, uh, that stickiness in your clients in order for them to buy these products and services from you rather than from other competitors.